Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. My name is Trent Gibson. I play basketball here and I'm a sophomore. I chose Tuscaloosa because of the family atmosphere that it's given. As soon as I walked on campus, um, I was embraced. And also just because of the academics. I, mean, I feel like I'm pushed every day to be my best. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities because we make buying simple. First, we discount every vehicle every day, and we stand behind what we sell with a lifetime warranty. For more, simply go to johnsoncitytoyota.com. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Remember, <laughs> you can't get to happily ever after <laughs> without once upon a time. Wow. Ingles, <laughs> all the ingredients for family. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can and then they push harder because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are division two. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. You step in or you pass up a shot that's wide open, you're coming out. Uh, we've got to be ready to shoot. We've got to be ready to step to the line. And
Our starting lineups and the opening tip is on the way here on the Pioneers Sports Network. Set to renew the rivalry, the 76th meeting between these schools. All time is coming up. Let's take a look at the starting five, the rail splitters. We'll start Lexi Kaiser, the redshirt sophomore out of Bluefield, Virginia. Addie Kirkpatrick, the 6'1 junior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Jordan Maney, the 5'10 sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. Lauren Flowers, the 5'7 freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And Sydney Newsom, the 5'10 redshirt sophomore from Morristown, Tennessee, Morristown West High School. Their head coach is Eric Bruton, Jr. in the interim season and replacing that of Crystal Evans. They're 6-8, and 5-5 five and five in the league, coming off a loss this past uh, Saturday. For the Pioneers, they'll start their usual five. Mia Long, the 5'4 senior from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Jayla Arnwine, the 5'6 junior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Sydney Wilson, the 5'9 graduate of Greensboro, North Carolina. Casey Johnson, the 6'0 graduate from Greensboro, North Carolina. And Maddie Sutton, the 6'0 junior from Wallen, Tennessee. Pioneers are coached by Devin Carter, who is in his fifth season with the Pioneers. 68 wins. He's just 2-6 and six against LMU all-time. Assisted by Jordan Sanders, Ashley Rodriguez and Camden Bonner for this Pioneer team at 13 and 3, ranked sixth in the region, 8 and 2, riding a four game winning streak in this one. Jennifer Rezac, Steve Robinson, Jerry Lawson, our officials, as Jerry Lawson steps center circle, he'll throw this one into the air, which is going to be won by LMU, and we are underway. Glad you could be with us, Brian State and Courtside, 80s night. Nathan Humbert's got a bag of tricks for you lined up throughout the entire game. He's our executive producer of the Pioneer Sports Network. LMU goes right to left on your radio dial. The first shot taken by Lexi Kaiser's off the mark and no good. Rebounded by Casey Johnson. Here come the Pioneers quickly into the front court in transition. And Wilson had stepped out of bounds, was too far when she fired the three and got the pass. So, uncharacteristic turnover against the Pioneers. <laughs> Out of play. <laughs> really is unfortunate, to be quite honest with you. Pioneers turn it over. Here comes LMU in transition the other direction. Again, going right to left on your radio. Lauren Flowers, the fantastic freshman, leading the team in scoring out of Stewart's Creek High School, a famed Stewart's Creek in that extremely tough region, Region 4, District 8 in the state of Tennessee, taking on the likes of uh, Blackman and Riverdale and all of those teams. And Stewart Creek usually holds its own. Sydney Newsom will drive it and score it, and Mia Long will drive it right the other end and score it for the Pioneers. It's tied at two. A minute gone here in this opening quarter. It'll be a Flowers in the backcourt. She'll bring it across the midcourt stripe on the dribble. Arnwine will watch her. Newsom on the right side, holding it at the three-point stripe. On to the right side, we'll kick it out baseline as Newsom on the drive, back out to the top of the key. Randy down the lane, put it up off the glass and banks it in. Nice aggressive move by Jordan, 5'10", sophomore out of Atlanta, averaging just about three points a game, getting just her 11th game of the year. Johnson will fake a three, will drive it into the paint, draw some contact, draw the, con the foul, but miss the lay-in. And the foul will go against LMU, will be their first, and the team's first here of this opening quarter play. Manny picks up her first. Nine players on the bench for this rail splitter team. 15 on the roster. But they have injuries to Ogburn, Russell, Jackamchuk, Prophet, 
Brabson McCombs. Johnson hits both to tie the game back at four. Dribble drive penetration against the Pioneers has been their nemesis the last two possessions for LMU after an opening three missed. Flowers across the stripe, watched by one of the conference's top thieves. That's me along. Right side is Kirkpatrick, picks up the dribble, will need some help. And a whistle for a foul as Long gambled for the steal. will pick up personal foul number one, just being a bit aggressive. What she has been able to do here over the last few games is pick up the early foul and play a good portion of the rest of the first half without picking up another. But another thing that Coach Devin Carter has done is brought in Hutchinson off the bench after about three or four minutes after she picks up that first foul. That's helped. Kirkpatrick gives it to Newsom. Watch by Arnwine. Newsom stays on the dribble, gives it up to Kirkpatrick, fires a 20-footer. It's good, just inside three-point territory on the baseline. 6-4, LMU. Right side, Fred Court, Mia Long on the dribble, surveying as she backs it out near the midcourt strike. Left side, Arnwine, Long, right side, Wilson, back to Long. Long on the dribble, wants a screen, gives it up to Wilson, quick touch inside. This will be Johnson, back out to the left side is Arnwine. Arnwine, five to shoot, kicks it out to Wilson, fires a three, shorts, and may have been partially deflected. Good defensive stand by LMU. Across the stripe, this is going to be Kaiser. Rail splitter basketball. Kaiser, watched by Mia Long, top of the key. A switch into the hands of Flowers. Flowers gives it up into the corner. Newsom three is on the way. That one's good as well. Sydney Newsom knocks down the three ball. The rail splitters up to a 9-4 lead, and they are on fire from the field. Four of five, shooting 80% to start. As good a start as you could get three minutes into the game. This pass deflected from Wilson into the Pioneers' Maddie Sutton, and she, I think, is going to be fouled. That's going to be the call. Kirkpatrick will pick up her first, team second. So the Pioneers will inbound baseline front court. Need a bucket this possession as the uh, rail splitters have come out on fire, one of the best field goal percentage defensive teams, the Pioneers. They don't allow a whole lot on their end of things, shooting, allowing teams just 38% on the year. Long into the paint, kick it out to Johnson, who fires a three. That's no good. Sutton, weak side rebound, waits, shoots, scores. Nine to six, LMU. Newsom brings it across the midcourt strike. Rail splitters have hit their last four shots. Can the Pioneers get a stop? This will be Flowers at the top of the key. Twins are gone for the rail splitters. That's such a huge part of their scoring from a year ago. Kaiser, a long-range three. This one's off the mark, but a long rebound comes out to Manny, and the rail splitters have a second-chance opportunity. Kaiser shooting 33% from downtown this year's 0 for 2 to start. Blocking foul is going to go against the Pioneers. Wilson, nope, they're going to change the call. It was a shoulder that was lowered. And I think the correct call now, Kirkpatrick will pick up her second. Number two on Kirkpatrick, team's third, acts as the turnover. And really what it was, I think Wilson was just outside of the restricted. And then when the official looked at it, she realized, yep, she was outside of that. Wilson, it looked as if initially had picked up the foul. But it was a lowering of the shoulder by Kirkpatrick, I think, that got her. Pioneers down nine to six. I don't know why you turn it or look. Arnwine, dribble drive into the paint. Kick it back out, Sutton. Arnwine, skip it left side to Wilson. And a traveling violation on the Pioneers. And Wilson's off to a very inauspicious start. She stepped out of bounds on the first pass of the game. And now she's traveled, tried to make a move to the bucket. Again against this zone that Coach Carter talked about. Haven't seen it, don't see it very often. A 1-2-2 two, two, or a 3-2. We saw it against Mars Hill, and the Pioneers hit 18 three-pointers in that game. But they have not started that way in this one. They're 0 for 2 from downtown. Kaiser to Manning at the top of the key. Now baseline, this will be Newsom. She'll go baseline, skip it onto the baseline to Kaiser right side, and then Arnwine just trying to stay out of the way. A dribble spin move attempt by Kaiser, and Arnwine's going to step or have her foot stepped on, and then Kaiser went down. So Arnwine with her second, or pardon me, her first team second. Kaiser on the inbound for the rail splitters. The pass is a bit too high, stolen by Mia Long. On the drive the other way. 
She'll kick it out to Arnwine. Long hits the deck, goes down and shakes the wrist a bit. Inside to Sutton, reverse it to Long, who's blocked from behind. Long didn't expect to have anybody behind her, but Flowers was hanging out there and gets the rejection. With the Pioneers down 9-6 to six and 5-13 to play. <laughs> Pioneers are going to turn it over here. So it'll be LMU on the inbound in front of their bench after the Pioneer turnover. Second turnover for Tuscal. Cannot take advantage early. 5-10 to play in the first quarter. Kaiser on the dribble in the backcourt will bring it across the midcourt strike. Bounce pass right side into the hands of Quarles, who's just checked into the contest off the bench, led the team in their last outing in the loss to Anderson. On the right side, this is going to be Kaiser. Kaiser with 10 to shoot. Can't go baseline. Need some help? Get some help. Three is fired. This one's no good. Rebounded by Maddie Sutton of the Pioneers. Long on the run to the front court. In the corner. Wilson a three. Bang! And one! We'll shoot a four-point play opportunity when we return right after this with 4.36 to play in the first quarter. It's Tusculum 9 and Lincoln Memorial 9. Pioneer basketball continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level life at division two the opportunities are here are you ready Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity Basketball. to ah. the Pioneers and the Rail Splitters are tied at nine. LMU hasn't scored in two and a half minutes after opening the game four of five. They missed their last two with the turnover as well. And the uh, Rail Splitters 57%. The Pioneers at 50% as Wilson. Hits the three, draws the foul against Sydney Newsom. That would be her first and the team's fourth here at this opening quarter. And Wilson to the strike. Gives the Pioneers the lead at 10-9 after trailing at 9-4. That would be a 6-0 spurt by the Pioneers. Into the front court is Kaiser on the baseline. Picking up a loose ball is Manny. Her shot is no good from in close. And then the ball is knocked out of bounds by Jayla Arnwine away from Quarles. So the rail splitters will inbound baseline front court after they've missed their last three shots, and they beat the Pioneer Press that time. They got an easy look, but it was mishandled. Quarles on the inbound for LMU. Hands it off to Kaiser. 4.15 to play in this opening quarter. Kaiser will bounce it to Manning. Manning on the left wing, on the dribble, knocked away by Long, saved by Kaiser. Kaiser with five to shoot, gives it up to Newsom. Newsom with four, with three, with two. She doesn't know it. She'll lose the possession on the shot clock violation. So another turnover against the rail splitters. That is three turnovers for them in their last five possessions. They've also gone 0 for 3 in that time. Sutton from the baseline, or throws it to the baseline, in the paint to Johnson, turns, shoots, and scores on Quarles. A good high-low feed by Sutton. It was a bounce pass into the paint. The Pioneers lead by 3. Quarles in the back court will bring it across the stripe, watched by Casey Johnson. We'll skip it. This will be Flowers. Open 18-footer in and out is no good. The rebound tipped and, and controlled by Maddie Sutton. Two players down in the back court for LMU as Long takes off. Long spins at the foul line, gives it back to Sutton, throws it to Wilson, fires a long-range three. It's too strong, and the weak side rebound comes down to Flowers. 
Flowers will have it and bring it into the front court as well. So, 12-9 Tusculum. Wilson hit the four-point player first four, but it's been a rough start for her. The ball that's deflected, but right out to Kaiser. Got away with maybe an illegal dribble. Goes behind the back. Sutton knocks it away. The ball's loose on the floor. Jump ball. Arrow to Tusculum. Maddie Sutton created it. Long jumped on top of it and gives the arrow to the Pioneers. 2.56 to play here in this opening quarter of action. Jazz Williams will check in. So two Morristown West products will be on the floor at the same time. Sydney Newsom and Jasmine Williams, high school teammates at Morristown West High School. Pioneers on an 8-0 run over the last, say, four minutes or so, and the rail splitters haven't scored in about four minutes and 15 seconds. Skip pass, Jayla Arnwine a three. Bang! Jayla Arnwine from downtown. Pioneers lead 15-9 to take their largest lead of the contest. They're on an 11 to nothing run as well. Used a 20 to nothing run against Wingate in the first half and a 15 to nothing run in the third quarter against the Bulldogs to eventually go up by 35. A four of five start for the rail splitters, but they haven't made a shot in now about five minutes. Kaiser got away with steps as she runs into the lane, throws it up off the glass, banks it in. Ends the drought for the rail splitters. Long quickly into the front court, had it knocked away, and the rail splitters dive on top of it and win it back for the for LMU. Flowers with it into the front court on the right side, bouncing it to Grace Day. Day thwarted by Williams. Williams maybe got a piece of the drive by Flowers, and Williams with some good energy, and that's what her coach was asking for her off the bench. Comes up with not only the defend in the paint, but also the rebound. Long to Williams, left side Johnson a three. That one's overshot as well. Rebound taken easily by Sidney Newsom. Pioneers want to get into the LMU bench, and the tempo has been ramped up a bit here after the media timeout. Across the stripe will be Kaiser. Kirkpatrick's had to leave because of the two fouls for LMU. Newsom on the left side. Skip pass goes over the goal to Kaiser, who saves it before it goes out of bounds. Kaiser a step back three, short, and the rebound is tipped out of bounds off Newsom, and the Pioneers will have it, leading 15 to 11 with 108 to play. And in comes Hutchinson, Dixon, and Miller for the Pioneers. Into the game comes Kendall Caudill for the rail splitters. All nine going to play tonight for interim head coach, Coach Bruton. Right side front court on the dribble is Hutchinson into the front court on the right wing. Top of the key is Dixon, left side to Miller. Miller, Dixon, Hutchinson, a three, short. Rebound tipped by Williams and taken by LMU, and they're going to win the arrow. So LMU will have the basketball back. So it'll be LMU basketball. I enjoy watching the dialogue with coaches and referees about what they want. I'm I'm with Coach Bruton. I mean, that, you just can't jump on somebody on the floor. You know, I mean, that's usually a foul. We'll, we'll take the tie-up situation. That's all fine. But usually when you jump and dive on top of somebody, if it's, and I've said it for weeks, it's an invasion of privacy. You just can't do that. Manny at the top of the key for LMU. Rail splitters trying to equal the Pioneer energy. Newsom on the dribble, watched by Dixon. Newsom breaks her down into the lane, goes around one, goes around two, and can't get it to go. Rebound taken away by the Pioneers with 10 seconds to play in the quarter. It's a good drive, good take by Newsom, just didn't finish it off. Left side in the corner. Arnwine will take off for the rim, rejected by Manny with .6 to play in the quarter. That's a big-time stop on the baseline. On the inbound, it's going to be Tusculum. On the inbound, point six. Williams got it away. It's no good. And that will be the end of the first quarter. At the end of one, it's Tusculum at 15, LMU 11. Pioneer basketball will continue after this here 
on the Pioneer Sports Network. Communities throughout the country, whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, awesome. So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember awesome. that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Wear your favorite 80s garb. You won't be dressed alone. Cheerleading staff has done their best Olivia Newton-John and Flash Dash impersonations tonight. Right side, Fred Court. Baseline three by Miller is well off the mark. No good. The Pioneers haven't scored in three minutes. They lead 15-11 after going on the 11 to nothing run after they trailed 9-4. Rail splitters trying to get back into it by their defense. They've got a couple of rejections to kind of aid that. Manny, who has one of them, driving baseline. She's double teamed, forces one up, no good. Rebounded by Dixon of Tusculum. Dixon had it knocked away and stolen by Manny. Then Dixon with the block. Weak side, loose ball pickup by Caudle. She travels out of the paint, gives it up to Flowers, who draws a foul. Well, we were all discombobulated right there. Hutchinson will pick up the foul, her first team's first of the second quarter. And Flowers will go to the free throw line, 65% out of Stewart's Creek High School, where she is one of only three players in history there to score over 1,000 points. She is solid, finishing her high school career 1,600-plus points. Making the first, her second free throw on the way. This one is also good. So it's a 15 to 13 Pioneer lead. After the Pioneers went on an 11-0 run to go up 15 to nine, they haven't scored in over three minutes from the first quarter here. Hutchinson, Miller at the top of the key. Left side, now baseline to Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Looking to bounce it into Williams, and the ball's kicked away by Newsom, and the Pioneers will reset it. So the inbound is going to be Jayla Arnwine. Arnwine on the left wing, top of the key, Williams, right side, now throw it baseline, back out top of the key, all around the perimeter. No penetration and nobody underneath for the Pioneers, and this ball will be dribbled off the shoe top of Flowers. So on the inbound will be Arnwine. Who steps up? Who's the scorer for this team out here right now? Miller with three, with two, with one. Arnwine fires, missed the three, and the rebound is loose and picked up by Cottle of LMU. So the rail splitters have had four consecutive stops. 15-13 Pioneers. Bounce pass to Grace Day. Her dad played for LMU back in the 80s, so a legacy player for LMU. Just a thrill for her to be out on the floor playing for her dad's old team. Newsom on the drive against Williams, who gets a piece of that shot, blocked it out of bounds with two seconds on the shot clock. Williams blocking her former high school teammate out of play. So it'll be Flowers to inbound for LMU. Baseline front court for the rail splitters. Manny, a nice cut to the rim, count it one. Dixon got back cut, and the chance for LMU to reclaim the lead, and the foul goes against Brianna Dixon. That'll be her first, team second. And so a nice little run here for LMU. They've tied the game up on a mini 6-0 spurt, can go on a 7-0 run to take the lead back. 
neither team shooting the ball very well. Tuscalum coach Devin Carter said, we have to shoot well. We have to make shots. Manny cannot make the free throw, so we're tied at 15. Across the stripe, this will be Mia Long. At the top of the key on the dribble, she's back in with Casey Johnson, Maddie Sutton, and Sydney Wilson. Long. Baseline is Arnwine. Arnwine to Sutton. Long. She'll penetrate. Kick it back out. Wilson. Extra pass. Back to Wilson. Fires a three. It looks short. It is. And the rebound comes down to LMU. From outside, not doing it. Across the stripe. This will be Cottle for LMU. Drives into the paint. Got away with step. Back out for Flowers. And she'll be whistled for a travel. LMU will give it up. Just their fifth turnover so far in the first half. Tuskelum also with five. Tuskelum five of 16 from the field. They've missed their last six shots. And they're just two for 10 from three against this zone by the rail splitters. The Pioneers have not been able to uh, capitalize to this point. Of course, they haven't had many open looks either, to be honest. Arnwine at the top of the key. Long will square, fake, then throw it back out into the corner to Wilson. Wilson back out to Johnson, who will fire a three. This one is off the mark and no good. Rebounded by Arnwine and a foul against Mia Long, apparently. Long will pick up her second personal foul, the team's third here in the second quarter. And you get a little frustrated when shots don't go down. LMU on the mini 6-0 spurt right now, but can reclaim the lead that they had when they led 9-4. And then at, the, at that point, 9-6 prior to the four-point play by Sidney Wilson. A big lull right here for the Pioneers, really laboring offensively. And LMU just doing enough. Newsom will be whistled for a travel and give it right back to the Pioneers. So LMU kind of helping out the Pioneer efforts with the Pioneers 0 for 4 here in this quarter. LMU is just 1 for 4 in the quarter. But now their second consecutive turnover. Top of the key, L. Hutchinson. Hutchinson, Sutton, into the paint to Johnson. Working on Grace Day. Layup is off the mark. It was a tough take. And it's no good, a little strong. Everything a bit strong for the Pioneers. Nothing really on target. Right down the lane, right to the rim is Flowers. Nobody stopped ball. 17-15, LMU with the lead. 6.20 to play in the opening half. Hutchinson to the top of the key. Swing it left side to Arnwine, a three. Bang! Jayla Arnwine hits the three. And the Pioneers back on top by one. On the inbound, it's Cottle. Beating the Pioneer press, she'll take it into the front quarter cell. Kick out three by Manny. That one's overshot, no good. Rebound weak side taken by Sutton. Hutchinson into the front court on the dribble. Gives it up to Sutton. Right side, KJ. Hutchinson on the baseline. Watched by Day, and now Hutchinson started to the rim, backs it back out. Left side to Wilson. Wilson, Johnson. Sutton on the left side, drives in, had it knocked away, and it's going to be taken and kept by the rail splitters who forced the turnover. Across the midcourt stripe will be Kendall Cottle. Cottle with the Pioneers leading by one here in the opening half. LMU trying to slow it down a little bit. Sutton with the steal as they tried to feed it inside. Cottle nearly with the steal, and then Sutton gives it up to Hutchinson. 18-17, Tusculum by one. Hutchinson, Wilson, Arnwine skips it to Hutchinson. Sutton, top of the key, Johnson, Wilson. She'll penetrate into the paint. Layup is good, Cindy Wilson. 4.50 on the clock, first half. Pioneers by three. Two of seven this quarter. The Pioneers, two of six for LMU. Cottle from the right side, bouncing it into the paint, Manny. Turnaround jumpers off the mark, no good. Rebound taken by Arnwine. They force more tempo into the front court. Arnwine on a double team, had it knocked away. It's a jump ball on the arrow to LMU, which will also take us to a timeout on the floor. We go to a break with your score. It's Tusculum 20, LMU 17. Pioneer basketball in 80s night continues here on the Pioneer Sports Network.
So the Pioneers lead 20 to 17 as we come out of the timeout. Both teams seven for 20 shooting in the game. Pioneers are two for seven the quarter. LMU is two for seven as well. Very similar. Tusculum though leads by three. As in the game, they've hit three from downtown. The rail splitters have hit one. Kaiser top of the key on the dribble. Left baseline, this will be Newsom. She'll go baseline. Three to shoot, two to shoot, put up a tough shot, it won't go, and the rebound taken by Jayla Arnwine. Arnwine up ahead to Maddie Sutton. Sutton goes right to the rim and had it knocked away. It's off her kneecap out of bounds as well. So the Pioneers can't finish on the fast break. Good defense once again protecting the rim. 3.48 here on the clock in this opening half. Pioneers have been very good and putting together runs of late. Now, not against Carson Newman in the second quarter. They scored just five points, but they put a run together in the second half. But a very tightly contested first half to this point. Kaiser, a baseline three, is left open. It's no good. Rebound taken by Wilson. Up ahead, Jayla Arnwine. Arnwine to the baseline. Top of the key to Sutton to Wilson. Wilson at the top. Into the paint to Johnson. Back out, Arnwine a three. Overshot this one, and the rebound taken by Newsom. A weak side board. Another open look for the Pioneers that won't go to the chagrin of Pioneer coach Devin Carter. Across the stripe is Kaiser. On the dribble. Well, hand it off. Newsom will just fire a three. That one's off the mark. Maddie Sutton grabs another rebound for the Pioneers. Sixth of the game. Johnson. Arnwine on the baseline. Back to Johnson. Bouncing it to Sutton in the paint. They've done a nice job on the interior, but this time Sutton got free, missed it, got it back, scored it. 2.40 on the clock. Pioneers lead by five. Largest lead has been six of the game. Five has been the largest lead for LMU. Right side front court. This is going to be Kaiser. Two and a half to the half as Kaiser on the dribble. Takes some time off the clock, trying to keep this a low-scoring affair. Pioneers have not been able to get into transition either. Weak side pass and a whistle for a foul as Day receives the pass from the left side of the lane and draws the foul against Maddie Sutton, who will pick up her first and the team's fourth. So into the game will come Aaliyah Miller, Jazz Williams, and Kirsten Click. So a lot of energy by the Pioneers in the contest, but not a lot of shots going in. Pioneers 8 of 23, the rail splitter 7 of 23. LMU looking to end the scoring drought of four minutes, and they do that with a day free throw. A four-year standout at Lower Dolphin High School in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Her dad was a member of LMU's basketball team back in the 80s, and she remembers coming and watching her dad play. Well, she says that she would attend games when she was extremely, extremely young. So a legacy player back at LMU out of Pennsylvania. Makes both free throws. Pioneers Hutchinson, a little baseline drive is good. 24 to 19, Pioneers, as Hutchinson gets her first two of the night. Kaiser is going to be trapped as she brings it across the strike. Tries to throw out of that, and the ball is going to go out of bounds, and no one touched it. So it'll be Pioneer basketball as LMU just gives it up. Tried to throw it off a player. It was Kaiser that would deflect out of play, and that wasn't going to be the case. So cool beans. Pioneers have the basketball back. Cross the stripe. This is going to be Hutchinson. Pick and roll outside to click. Didn't catch it cleanly. I guarantee you she was going to shoot it. And an illegal screen on Jazz Williams. We're good for one of those again. We are. We're, we're good for one of those again. So don't have a cow. We get an illegal screen once again. Williams will pick up the foul. It's her first. Team foul five. With 1.29 to play here in the first half. No field goals in almost five minutes for the rail splitters, but they ended their scoring drought with two free throws the last trip by day. Pioneers by five at 24 to 19. A minute 20 to play in the first half. Kaiser hands it off to Flowers, spins on the dribble to the foul line, kicks it out. Cottle will fire a three. It's good. 
Kendall Cottle doesn't take a lot of threes, but when she does, she's high percentage, 45% from downtown, and it's 24-22. Hutchinson, Johnson, in the corner is Miller. In the paint is Williams. Spins on the double team, and Day will pick up a foul. Williams spins right into her from the right block and picks up the foul against Day. LMU has done a really nice job in the second quarter playing without fouling, considering the fact that's their first foul. So other scores in the league. Carson Newman was down 6 to nothing. They're on a 30-11 run in the first half. They lead 30-17. to Wingate leads Queens 15-10. LR over Mars Hill 16-11. Coker leads Newberry 15-8. And the battle of first place in the league tonight, Anderson, ranked 13th in the country, leads 23rd-ranked Catawba, 21-20. 55 seconds to play in this first half, and Jazz Williams to the stripe makes both free throws. 26-22, Tuscal. Kaiser on the inbound. Looking, throws it away to nobody, stolen by Aaliyah Miller. Just threw the ball in into a vast domain in which Miller was the first there to pick it up. So it'll be Hutchinson, left side onto the baseline, into the hands of Click, top of the key is Hutchinson, right side is Miller, and Miller travels. <laughs> 40 seconds to play in the half. Jayla Arnwine will check into the contest for the Pioneers. Coddle in the backcourt for the rail splitters. Takes it across the stripe. Double team comes. She gets out of that. Kaiser. Bounce pass on the baseline. 15-footer off the glass is good by Quarles. She took it from the baseline, and somehow it banked in. 26-24. Hutchinson between the rings, front court. On the right side. Baseline, right side to the top. Williams into the corner. Three ball by Click. Back iron, no. Rebound weak side taken by Johnson. Four to play in the half. Missed it. Gets it back and then is blocked out of bounds apparently. So much contact in the paint, but nothing there. So .6 on the clock. Arnwine on the inbound. Hutchinson gets it away. No good as it rims twice, and that will be the end of the first half. Well, at the end of the first half against the conference leading Anderson, LMU led by two. Here they trail by two to the Pioneers. At halftime, it's Tusculum at 26 at LMU 24. Coming up here at the half, a conversation with Pioneer coach J.T. Burton. That's on the way, so stay with us. This is Pioneer Basketball on the Pioneer Sports Network. My name is Nicole McMillan and I played soccer here and I currently run cross country and track and field. And why I chose Tusculum is definitely because of the coaching staff, but also the faculty in general. Everyone just makes you feel like a family. You walk around campus, you see familiar faces, and it's like a home away from home. Johnson's 
Simplicity Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities because we make buying simple. First, we discount every vehicle every day, and we stand behind what we sell with a lifetime warranty. For more, simply go to johnsoncitytoyota.com. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes then you're, you're in. <laughs> just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people and Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce and this is my Ingalls story. You have to take the game. Attacking gets your goals real quick. I give your best effort every day. One, two, one, two.
In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Six to 24 and they used an 11 nothing run down nine to four early they went on to the 11 0 run to take a 15 to 9 lead looked as if they were getting ready to take off but then the offense just kind of shut down LMU would actually come back take a 17 15 lead but an Arn wide three to make it 18 17 would give the pioneers the lead the rest of the half Tusco would only go up by as many as five the rest of the way only to have LMU come back to cut it to within two here at the break. Both teams with just nine field goals. Tusculum nine of 27 in the first half, 33%. Three for 15 from three, went one for eight in the second quarter alone. Five for five at the free throw line. LMU shot nine of 25 for the half, 36%. Went two of nine from three, and they were four of five at the free throw line. Tusculum gets the edge uh, rebound-wise, 19-14. Six offensive boards for the Pioneers. Six assists, 10 turnovers for Tusculum, very odd. Two blocks and four steals. And for LMU, six assists, nine turnovers, two blocks and five steals in that first half of play. For the Pioneers, balance scoring, really. Jayla Arnwine's hit two three-pointers, and Sidney Wilson has hit for six points as well. Maddie Sutton has four points, seven boards, four points for Casey Johnson, two points for L. Hutchinson, two for Mia Long, but only played 11 minutes of the half, and two points for Jazz Williams for their total of 26. LMU has five points from Sidney Newsom and five rebounds, four points for Jordan Maney. Pardon me, Jordan Manny. Two points for Addie Kirkpatrick, four points for Lexi Kaiser, three for Kendall Cottle off the bench, two points for Shamira Quarles, and two points for Grace Day for their total of 24. Each team has scored 10 points in the paint. LMU 9-7 in points off turnovers. Each team has four second-chance points in that first half of play. We had four ties and three lead changes, and the Pioneers lead by two here at the half. We'll check scores around the league when we return right after this. Your score at halftime, Tusculum 26 LMU 24, 80s night at the arena here on the Pioneers Sports Network. It's a sign of 30 seconds. Buying or selling a home is a major commitment. Be confident before you sign. Look for the hometown realty sign. You want to get a good deal. And deal with people you trust. We know the local market, and we'll listen to your needs. That's why wherever you look, you'll see the signs. Call 639-2345. Hometown Realty of Greenville, it's the sign of success. It's the sign of success. This is the Pioneer Halftime Show on the Pioneer Sports Network. Tusculum versus Lincoln Memorial. tonight. Catawba leads Anderson at halftime 31 to 29. Carson Newman leads 50 to 29 as they near the half. Wingate leads Queens 24 20. It's LR leading Mars Hill 26 16 and Coker leads Newberry 24 to 17 as they near the half as well. Here at halftime Tusculum leads by two need the offense to get going. Their defense has been pretty good. At halftime, Tusculum 26, LMU 24. Pioneer basketball will continue from Pioneer Arena after this on the Pioneer Sports Network.
I love Greene County. This is my home, where I was born and raised. How long do you want? Andrew Johnson Bank, hometown realty and auction. Wash Depot, the red, white, and blue marathon quick stop market. Your Greenville Light and Power System. Corley's Pharmacy. McIntosh and Lee Insurance. And Greenville Federal Bank. And now, with the call, the voice of the pioneers, Rob. 76th meeting between Tusculum and LMU tonight. LMU leads the all-time series 44-30, but Tusculum, since the conference members, uh, own a 17-11 edge. <laughs> And they've won their last two games here at home. They haven't had a whole lot of success of late against the rail splitters, though, as LMU has won three of the last five. And let's go back uh, to even a little bit more than that. They have actually won six of the last eight. Tusculum will have the ball to start the second half, 80s night, where we had a Barthier out type first half. And the Pioneers nearly have a turnover to start the second half as Newsom nearly steals it, but the Pioneers aren't wide able to hang on to it. Sutton, long, count it. Oh, yeah, I thought she was fouled. They will get the layup. 28-24, good cut by Mia Long, good find by Sutton. That's a good adjustment at the half against the zone. 30 seconds into the second half, Ryan State and courtside, game station engineer, the executive producer of the Pioneer Sports Network on the radio end. That's Nathan Humber. From the TV side of things, I'd like to thank Corey for uh, providing some great pictures tonight along with Zach Hartle. Inside to paint, Kirkpatrick layup attempt is no good. Missed it from point blank, rebounded by Casey Johnson. Pioneers force tempo into the front court. Top of the key is Johnson, right side is Arnwhy. Pioneers want to make this LMU defense move, and they've worked it pretty good, but they haven't worked many, very many open shots. Sutton gets one here and draws a foul. Can't finish at the rim, though. She'll go to the line to shoot two as Kirkpatrick will pick up her third. Number three on her, team's first of the second half. Shamir Quarles will check in, the senior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. Had a 16-point game against Wise, coming off an 11-point game. In the loss to Anderson. Sutton at the free throw line, good with the first. Second attempt for Maddie Sutton. That's off the mark, no good, but the rebound tipped by Casey Johnson. The Pioneers have a second chance. Top free throw shooter in the conference during the Coker game, but Maddie Sutton's percentage has dropped since. Long to Arnwy Johnson. In the corner is Arnwy. Good rotation. Bang. Against the zone, a good rotation by RY. 32 to 24. Tusculum has the largest lead of the game. Across the stripe in the front court will be the rail splitters. Bounce pass on the right side. This is Newsom. Newsom watched by Johnson. Quarles begging for it in the paint. Newsom still holding it. Now puts it on the floor. Dribbles on the right wing. Goes baseline. Splits a double team. Missed the layup, and the rebound is talked away and taken by the Pioneers. Here comes Mia Long. Long spins on the dribble, kick out to Arnwine for a three, bam! Timeout taken by Coach Bruton of LMU, and that'll take us to a timeout as well. 8.06 to play in the third quarter. Tusculum 35, LMU 24. Pioneer basketball continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network.
the Lincoln Memorial on the Pioneer Sports Everyone Network. Has a your home for Pioneer basketball right with the voice of the Pioneers, Ryan Staten. So with 8.06 to play in the second half, the Pioneers have started the second half on a 9 to nothing run, using an 11-nothing run in the first half. Long playing with the two personal fouls, defending the freshman Flowers. will give it up into the hands of Newsom. Newsom on the right side for LMU. Pioneers have started the second half, three for three from the field. Jayla Arnwine's two for two from downtown. She is riding a hot hand from three of late. Jumper by Flowers will end the streak to start the second half. Good take by Flowers and a good make as well. 15-foot baseline jumper. Long spins. Gives it up to Johnson. Now to Wilson, who hesitates, fires a three and drains a three. Three from downtown here in the second half for the Pioneers. 38-26, Tusculum. LMU pressured in the backcourt. Kaiser gives it up to Newsom, who takes it across the strike. Kaiser. Right side to Newsom. Newsom on that right wing, holding it at the three-point line. LMU very, very patient offensively. Under seven to play in the third. Flowers. Kaiser, one to shoot it, won't get it away in time. Are they going to count that bucket? They're going to count that bucket? Are you kidding me? Dude, she didn't get it off in time. Johnson at the other end. Onto the right side, Long. Long had it knocked away. Knocked away again. Kaiser had it. She lost it to Sutton, who lays it up. Missed the layup. Rebounded by Johnson. It's no good. Missed a point-blank layup in the paint and rebounded by LMU. Unbelievable. Right side front court is LMU's Kaiser. Kaiser to Newsom. In the lane, Kaiser reversing it to Quarles. Puts it up and in. 38-30, Tuscola. Across the stripe will be Mia Long. Long on the right wing. Lobbing it to Wilson. They've hit some shots from outside, have the Pioneers, to open up a little breathing room. Johnson tries another one. This one's in and out, no good. She'll follow her own miss. And it's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Manny. LMU basketball. Into the game, that comes Spikes, a freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Titiera Spikes into the contest. Her first action of the game. Wilson will inbound, baseline front court, Casey Johnson. Left side is long. Wilson walked. Has got to put it on the floor. 38 to 30, Tusculum leading by eight, opening up this second half, four of seven from the field, but we'll turn it over, and again, an inordinate amount of times. So a Pioneer team that six ranks eighth in division to enforcing turnovers again. Long nearly had one there. And a traveling violation on Kaiser. They do force a turnover in backcourt. Long forces it. Pioneers, as mentioned, eighth in Division II in turnovers force, trailing Catawba, which is third nationally. Pioneers lead the conference, ranked 14th in the nation in steals per game, second in the league in fewest turnovers per game, but not proving it so far here tonight. Johnson overshoots a layup attempt. So two point blank misses in the paint here in this second half for the Pioneers and LMU hanging around, 38-30. Quarles on the right side on the dribble. Kaiser hands it off, Flowers. Flowers bouncing it into the paint to Quarles. Goes right baseline, tough hook shot is good. Shamir Quarles and it's 38-32. 6-0 run by LMU. Long right down the lane. Lost it, shoots it, missed it. Rebound taken away by the uh, rail splitters, and that's going to be Newsom. Right side is Flowers. It's a 6-0 spurt by LMU. Pioneers need a stop. Too many, too many valleys in the game. Pioneers have missed their last five shots, haven't scored in almost three minutes now. Spikes, top of the key, Quarles. Newsom with five to shoot. Drives into the paint around Johnson. Count it one. Got away with the little stutter step on her way to the rim. That's usually a travel. 
And that'll take us to a timeout on the floor. Casey Johnson with the foul, her first, team's first. And with 4.31 to play, Newsom will go to the line to try to make it a three-point game. It's Tunskillum 38. Tusculum versus Lincoln Memorial. Once again, the voice of the pioneer. Sydney Newsom will go to the line to try to make it a 9-0 run, which she does, so it is. And it's a three-point pioneer lead. Haven't scored in over three minutes. Tusculum has missed their last five shots. LMU's made their last five. 38-35, Tusculum with the ball. Laboring offensively in this one. Back and forth we go. And against this zone, you got to make shots. The Pioneers have made some to start, but then have missed some. And then have had the ball knocked away as they've tried to create some space. Arnwine, inside, outside, long a three. That one is no good. Rebounded weak side by LMU. That'll be Newsom. Had it knocked away once, twice. Regains it. Passes deflected and stolen by Mia Long to Sutton. And she'll put it up and in this time. Won't miss from there. Pioneers forced the turnover to end the drought, which had been 0 for their last six and three and a half minutes. 40 to 35, Tuscola. Flowers in the backcourt for LMU. Now across the strike on the dribble. Bounce pass top of the key to Quarles. Quarles driving on Wilson. Shot, no. Rebounded by Wilson of the Pioneers to Long. Long, long pass to Arnwine, who had it knocked away, and it will be saved by Newsom to Flowers, who picks it up at the three-point line. Drives on Johnson, puts it up and in. Mia Long into the front court, gives it up to Wilson, bouncing it into Sutton. Double team comes, and she's going to be fouled. And coming to help was Lexi Kaiser, and I think they'll get her for a reach or at least a grab on the arm. So Kaiser will pick up her first and the team second. So the Pioneers will inbound baseline front court, leading by three. Cottle into the contest for Kaiser. Top of the key, this is going to be Mia Long. She'll take it right to the rim, draw some contact, no call. We play on. Rebounded on the miss by LMU's Flowers. So under three minutes to play here in this third quarter. On the drive, this will be Cottle to the rim, short. Rebounded by the Pioneers, outlet to Jayla Arnwine looking to run. She'll drive at Flowers, draw the foul on Flowers. Flowers will pick up her first, team's third, and it'll send Arnwine to the free throw line. Jazz Williams will check in for KJ. So Jayla Arnwine, the streak that she has been on of late, 19 she had against Coker, turn of this calendar year, 17 points. Game past 38 minutes against Carson Newman. Last five games, 12 points a game. Shooting 62% from the field, 59% from three. After she went 16% over a seven-game period from the field. Makes both free throws as well. 42-37, Pioneers. Flowers. Watched by Wilson in the backcourt. That should be an illegal dribble. 
stepping out of bounds, LMU. So LMU will turn it over. Pioneer basketball leading by five. Can they put together a string? Just one for their last eight, where LMU's hit six of their last eight shots. Left side, Arnwai. Wilson looking for Williams, knocked away by Quarles. Not a great pass there. Williams was covered up pretty good by Quarles. 80s night here tonight. I don't think we have 80s prices, though. I'm not sure. On the inbound, Maddie Sutton. Right side is Wilson, a three. Bang. Great screen set that time by Williams. 45-37, Pioneers. In the backcourt, LMU. Newsom, watched by Mia Long. Takes it into the front court. Double team comes. And a whistle for a foul as Wilson closed a little too tightly that time. Actually, we get Mia Long. So third on Mia Long, team foul number two. Hutchinson will check in with 2.06 to play here in the third. Newsom to inbound for the uh, rail splitters, right side front court, right next to our head coach. Interim head coach, I should, should say, Eric Bruton. Doing quite a bit with the little. 15 on the roster. He has nine healthy bodies tonight. Baseline is Newsom. Drives it into the lane, draws the foul against Williams. So Williams will pick up her second personal foul. That'll be the team's third. It'll send Sydney Newsom back to the free throw line. 1,000 point score in high school, 2,000 point score at Morristown West High School. Not had the type of year she's wanted. 12 games this year. 17 points against Coker last year was her career best. She's had a 12 point game this year against Mars Hill. And Newsom at the free throw line. Eight points already in this one and eight rebounds as well. Missing on the first free throw. Second by Newsom. That one's good. 45-38, Tusculum. Hutchinson into the front court for the Pioneers on the dribble on the left side. Arnwine. Right side, Sutton. She'll fake a three. Kick it back out to Wilson. He drives, floater, no. Rebound, LMU. Good defensive stop. LMU gets the stop. Can the Pioneers answer with a defensive stop? Cottle into the front court. Skips it right side to Flowers. Flowers watched by Arnwine. Flowers takes off into the paint. Shot partially blocked, and the loose ball picked up by Sutton. The ball kicked out by Flowers. A lot of contact on that drive as well. Pioneer basketball leading 45 to 38. I think the officials are tired of Coach Bruton. Left side is Hutchinson for the Pioneers on the dribble. Hutchinson had it stripped from behind. Newsom on the drive, puts it up and in. Forty seconds to play here in the third. 45-40. Tusculum leading LMU. Arnwine, Wilson for three. That's the bomb diggity. That would mean it's good. That's 80 slight. It's 48-40. Pioneers again by three, or pardon me, by eight, and then Sutton with the steal. Hutchinson, Arnwine, Sutton apparently is blocked. Loose ball, Wilson diving for it. It's still loose, picked up by LMU with eight seconds. Bodies on the floor everywhere. Cottle working in the paint. Kick out three to Flowers. No. Rebound and a whistle for a foul that goes against Quarles battling inside with point one on the clock. Well, the Pioneers messed up a fast break, a three-on-one break, enormously bad. It was like gag me with the spoon bag. So the Pioneers, all they can do is inbound the basketball here with point one. Nobody can score because it would have to be a deflection. So that will be the end of three quarters of play. 
At the end of three, it's Tusculum 48 and LMU 40. 80s night here at Pioneer Arena as we continue after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. LMU have each hit 16 field goals in the game. Pioneers have turned it over 13 times, as has LMU. LMU has scored 13 times off those turnovers. Tusculum just 12. And LMU has a 22-14 edge points in the paint. As we start the fourth quarter of play, Pioneers lead by eight. LMU with the basketball. A 7.10 rebound game for Maddie Sutton. 11 points for Sidney Newsom with eight rebounds for LMU. Newsom holding it. Giving it up to Quarles, double team, passes, or actually backs out of that. And then they give it up to Spikes, takes off in the paint, jumper is no good, rebound loose, and picked up by Williams for the Pioneers. Long looking to force tempo. Driving by Cottle, gets into the paint, kicks it back to Arnwy, left open for three. This one rims no good, rebounded by Williams, who will kick it back out to Long, to Wilson on the left wing. Sutton from the foul line. Will take Spikes off the dribble and draw the foul. Had to be a call there as Sutton will earn a trip to the free throw line. Spikes will pick up her first. Team's first here of the fourth quarter of play. Elsewhere in the league, the battle for first. Anderson leading 32-31, eight and a half to play in the third. So they're running a little behind us. Wingate leads Queens 33-31. Carson Newman over Wise, 59-42. LR leads Mars Hill 42-31 and Coker over Newberry 33-19. Sutton missing the free throw, which is news because she doesn't miss many. Makes the second. 49-40 Tusculum. They've led by as many as 12 in the game. A steal, yes. Wilson comes up with the steal. Arnwine can't handle the pass and she's going to give it up. Flowers can't save it though. It goes right back out of bounds. Really struggled in handoff passes and a lot of things. Attention to detail, maybe a lack of focus in some way. Either way, the Pioneers lead by 9, 49 to 40. Hasn't been completely clean all game. Shooting just 36% for the game. And just 8 of 23 from 3, but they've hit 8 to LMU's 2. Wilson for 3. Five. Sydney Wilson makes it another 12-point game, another big one. 52 to 40, Tuscan. Can they get a stop and just continue to carry some momentum? Flowers. Manning. Backdoor look for Newsom. Traveled, or is she fouled? And Newsom comes up a bit lame as well. And again, she missed an entire year due to injury also. And the personal foul will go on Wilson. This will be her first. Team's first. And so Newsom will shake it off and go to the free throw line. Newsom's looking for a season best this year. She has 11 right now. So now they're going to allow the substitute. Are they going to allow him to come in? Dixon will be in for Williams. And Williams exits stage left. So it'll be Newsom to the free throw line for the uh, rail splitters. And I've had to do a double take just to say 52% for Sid at the free throw line for Newsom. Apparently that's the case. But she drains the first, give her her 12th point, tying her season best, and she makes them both. So a new season best for Sydney, 13 for her. 51-42 Tuscaloosa. They've used the three ball tonight. Wilson will try another. This one is no good. The rebound tipped all the way out to Dixon, and the Pioneers get a second chance opportunity, some new life. Long. Dixon. Wilson lobbing it inside to Sutton. Knocked away. Right to Dixon. Baseline jumper is no good. Rebounded by Cottle. It's a good take by Dixon, who will chase Cottle all the way down into the front court. Pass goes out to Newsom, and again, the Pioneers build a 12-point lead, but cannot consistently keep up with that offensive uh, streak. 
So here they go back to playing defense. Kaiser's in there. Kirkpatrick's in the paint. Her jumper rims no good, and the rebound tipped out off Kirkpatrick. Just couldn't finish in the paint. So across the midcourt stripe with the basketball, this is going to be Mia Long. Top of the key, pass left side, Arnwine. Extra pass to Wilson for three. No. Weak side rebound, tracked down by Dixon into the hands of Long. Long has not been an offensive factor at all in the game, just four points. Closing in on somewhat of a milestone here at Tushkill, but she's going to have to have big games to close out her career. This will be Sutton through the lane, off the glass, and good. near steal it is and then Cottle gets it right back for LMU and then the foul on Arnwine so Arnwine making the foul all the way out back at about mid court and the play continued and Maddie Sutton tried to defend at the rim as the play was continuing I'm not sure if anybody heard a whistle or what it was but we got a foul all the way out at mid court and it went against I think Arnwine So Arnwine's going to pick up her second, the team's second as well. Pioneers appeared to have had the turnover. And then, again, they're just messing up the exchange. They're just messing up the passes just to open players and not looking it in or whatever it is, whatever it may be. Going to have a discussion at the scores table over something. 7-11 is on the clock. They're trying to set the 30-second clock. They do that. 26 seconds on the shot clock. So the Pioneers lead 53-42. to 42. They have hit eight three-pointers. They must have looked at a wrong line moments ago. Or they only counted one of Wilson's threes as a two. I think that's what it was. Wilson was 17 tonight, though, to lead the Pioneers. Six of 12 from the floor. She's hit four of nine from three. Newsom on the inbound. Gets it back. Aliyah Miller has checked in. Newsom right down the lane. Count it one. Arnwine was hoping for a breather. She's not going to get it. Aliyah Miller is going to pick up the foul. Number one on her. Team foul number three. So Newsom with an and one. She has a season best 15 points here tonight. She is the only player in double figures. Flowers has eight. And she hits the three-point play. Back to eight, 53 to 45. Tuscaloosa with seven minutes to play in the game. Across the stripe, this will be Mia Long. LMU just does not make it easy. They play really good, solid defense. Very active. And an illegal screen on Maddie Sutton. And that's the second on the Pioneers in the game. It turns the ball over, and a lot of those offensive, a lot of those turnovers have been offensive fouls in the game. So LMU with the ball down eight, 6.50 to play. The Pioneers need a stop. Cottle is bumped off the ball, turned over. Into the front court is Wilson. She'll drive it to the rim on Kaiser, lay it in. Well, a break there for the Pioneers. Kaiser in the backcourt. Watched by Long. Double team comes. She drives right around it. Gives it up onto the baseline to Cottle. Tried the reverse. It's no good. And the rebound is thrown out of bounds by Kirkpatrick. Casey Johnson will be into the contest. Flowers back into the game for LMU. With 6.24 to play in a very tough, hard-hitting affair. Let's just be honest. It has been very physical. Like Olivia Newton-John's song from the 80s. It was the number one song of the 80s. I don't know if you knew that. 1981. Left side front court, the Pioneers. Bree Dixon, Wilson. Wilson to Dixon. 10 to shoot for the Pioneers. Wilson. Watched by Kaiser. Drives baseline. Pull up from 10 feet. No good. Johnson with the rebound. Working on a double team. Throws out of that to Arnwine. No. 
Rebound taken by Flowers of LMU. 55-45, Tusculum. Flowers, nice job dribbling and handling the pressure by the Pioneers into the front court. On the right side, this is going to be Kaiser, a step back three. That one's no good, but Newsom tracks down the rebound for LMU. Then goes right to the rim and will be at the line to shoot two more. The foul goes on Casey Johnson. That'll be her second. And already five on the Pioneers. LMU has done a great job tonight playing without fouling. So Newsom to the free throw line. Free throw is good. Her career game now, a 17-point game. Last year, her, her career best. I don't know if Pioneer Pete is dressed up like a high school preppy or teen wolf. Not exactly sure. Both free throws made. It's a 55-47 Pioneer lead. Pioneers need a bucket here this possession. Just to keep pace with what LMU is doing, really. Johnson to Dixon. Wilson through a triple team. Back out Johnson a three. Bang. Fifty-eight forty-seven, Tusculum by eleven. Newsom driving left wing. Gives it up in the paint. Reverses to Kirkpatrick. Layup is good. Good ball reversal and good execution by LMU. Nine point pioneer lead. We go to 445 to play in the game. Devin Carter has not used a timeout in the game either, which is highly unusual for him. Dixon, long, long, dribble penetration. Johnson, long, and will back it back out. Eight to shoot, Arnwine in the paint, kick out Johnson, extra pass, Dixon a three. No, Arnwine had position, and this one is finally controlled by LMU. The shot hit the rim. I'm not exactly sure why that it was, the horn was going off. And here's a steal by Arnwine, and then a foul on Flowers, and that'll take us to a break. Timeout on the floor, 80s night at Pioneer Arena. 4-10 to play in the game. It's Tusculum 58, LMU 49. Pioneer basketball continues after this on the Pioneers Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. My name is Trent Gibson. I play basketball here and I'm a sophomore. I chose Tuscan because of the family atmosphere that it's given. As soon as I walked on campus, um, I was embraced. And also just because of the academics. Um, I feel like I'm pushed every day to be my best. Dixon into the paint for KJ. Spins on a double team. Left-handed lay-in is no good. The rebound, Mia Long secures it for the Pioneers. Another second chance. Long out to Arnwine on the left wing. Johnson, top of the key. Little fake down the lane, had it knocked away. Somehow managed to try to get it back, and then she's going to be tied up, and the arrow to stay with the Pioneers, fortunately. 19 for Wilson. Jayla Arnwine continues this hot streak. 14 for her. She's 4 of 9 from the field, all four field goals from three. And 10 points, 10 boards for Maddie Sutton, who gets the double-double. LMU, 18 for Sydney Newsom, career best, nine rebounds for her. She had like a 20-point game her freshman year. Wilson's three, she's fouled. Manny whistled for the contact, 
And Wilson will go to the free throw line to shoot three free throws. I didn't have a very good view of it. Man, he's not arguing it a whole lot. It'll be her third, or second team's third. Elsewhere in the league, Katab has reclaimed the lead on Anderson, 39-37. They're still in the third. Carson Newman is throttling wise, 88-60. Wingate leads Queens, 43-39. Wilson misses the first. LR has pulled away from Mars Hill finally, 56-39, and it's Coker leading Newberry, 44-38. This Saturday, the Pioneers on the road. We travel to Salisbury. We'll take on Catawba. Lost to Catawba in our second conference game of the year, November 30th, 78-71. And Devin Carter said the worst game he has seen his team play. Wilson makes two of three. So the Pioneers back in front by 11, 60 to 49. Their largest lead has been 12. Newsom with her career night, drives to the baseline, spins, and won. And it's been nothing but Sydney Newsom all game. They're going to get Sydney Wilson with the foul. And I think what they heard was the ball slapped. Newsom finished through the contact. Wilson picks up her second. And Sydney Newsom goes to the free throw line to chance at a three-point play again. Which she gets and has a career best extended to 21. Left side front court. The Pioneers get into the front court with 3.20 to play in the game, leading by just eight. No lead is safe the way the Pioneers have shot the basketball in the game. Just 36%. And the way they're shooting free throws. Wilson a three. No. Rebounded by Johnson to the rim. Yes. Ten-point Pioneer lead. They're able to keep pace. Kaiser in the backcourt. Watched by Wilson. Doubled. Knocked away by Dixon. Wilson picks it up, drives it to the rim, lays it in. 64-52. Dixon knocked it away, and Wilson was able to finish it. As a matter of fact, Dixon just got a long way away. Such a long reach for Dixon. Flowers right down the lane, parting of the Red Sea, and then Newsom steals the inbound pass to Flowers, who banks it in. An eight, a four-point play to make it an eight-point lead for the Pioneers. 2.20 on the clock. Long, quickly into the front court, is tripped up. Dixon, Johnson, Wilson, three. Bang. That's in your face. That's 80 slang, by the way. That's not being derogatory. I was just trying to be bad, which means good in the 80s. Well, the Pioneers get a timeout, leading by 11. It's been back and forth here in this fourth quarter of play. LMU's hit their last four shots. Tusculum's hit their last three. Defense had a, is optional. 19-16, Tushkill outscoring LMU here in the fourth quarter. They've been, they've outscored LMU every quarter but one. The second, they were outscored 13-11. In four of the last five games against LMU, it have been single-digit games. Tushkill bucked that trend in the home finale last year against LMU when they won the game by 11 points. And again, I'm still trying to figure out if Pioneer Pete is a, a, a like a, a Pioneer Zeke, whatever his name is, is Teen Wolf or not. I still can't figure out if he's Teen Wolf or just a preppy high school kid. I keep calling him. I said Pete. It's Zeke. We just can't stop fouling Sidney Newsom. Maddie Sutton took an illegal screen that nobody called out. And Newsom is going to go to the free throw line. And Casey Johnson picks up the personal foul, so Newsom is going to go right back to the strike. Again, defense is optional here in the final five minutes of this one. And Newsom continues an impressive streak. Now nine of ten at the free throw line. She, I don't. How in the world does she have these numbers? In 12 games, 5.6 points a game, 4.1 rebounds a game. Shooting 41% from the floor, 51% from the free throw line. 
She does miss the second. It's a 10-point Pioneer lead. Arnwine a three. You bet. Largest lead of the game attained right there on the three by Arnwine, whose phenomenal surge here in January continues. Kaiser just into the front court for the rail splitters. 90 seconds to play, and the Pioneers leading by 13. Kaiser back out to Kirkpatrick. Top of the key is Flowers. Little ball fake, drives in the paint. Drives on Johnson, puts it up and dry, drops it in. Dribble drive, points in the paint tonight. 32-22 in favor of LMU. Arnwine, Sutton, blocked by Newsom. And then the loose ball picked up by Mia Long. A minute to play, and then a foul on LMU. And Flowers, a frustration foul, will be just the team's fourth as Flowers just turned it over. A nice defensive play by Newsom. She's done everything tonight, Newsom. So it'll be Pioneer basketball. Leading by 11, 70 to 59. Wilson takes off to the rim, kicks it back to Johnson. Gives it up to Wilson. And Wilson will be fouled with Sydney Wilson attaining something that she hasn't done very often in her career. And that's just established new career highs. And uh, very, very close to doing that again. Of course, the 28-point game she had against UVA Wise, rallying the troops in that contest. Missing on the free throw attempt, though. She has 26 points. She scored 28 points in that UVA Wise game. Took 10 field, made 10 field goals and took 23 shots in that game. She's doing it on a lot less shots in this one. 17 attempts. And a timeout quickly asked for by LMU, who's made their last five shots, and all of them basically has just been going to the rim. Tusculum has hit four of the last five. And uh, the rail splitters will also advance it with 55.8 seconds to play. Down 12 in the basketball game. A career best 22 for Sydney Newsom. Flowers has 14 points tonight. She had the 25-point game against Belmont Abbey. That was the first game of the year for the rail splitters. And Flowers had only been averaging 6.7 points a game in the last three contests. But she has been able to put forth some uh, big effort. Without Lindsey Prophet tonight, a big-time outside shooter for LMU, injured. Jack Imchuk also out since early December. Kaiser, baseline three. That one's no good, and the rebound comes down into the hands of the Pioneers. And the three-point shot has failed LMU tonight. Now just two for 12, and the difference is staggering when you look at it. If I was the announcer for LMU, I'd say, well, the reason that Tusculum's winning the game is because they have hit nine more three-pointers in the game, and that would be totally accurate. Tusculum's made 11, LMU's made two. But if Profit was in the game for LMU, that would not be that disparity. It would be somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe they would have six made threes by now. And if that was the case, then we'd have a one-point game right now as... Casey Johnson makes the free throw, the first. And the second is also good for KJ. And another timeout for LMU to advance the ball. Down 14 with 46 seconds to play in the game. Is it their last timeout? Hopefully. With 46 seconds to play in the contest here on 80s. It's 80s night. No, I guess that's not. I guess they have one more timeout remaining. I guess I don't understand the timeout rules. So I'm going to read about the timeout rules. How many timeouts do they have? Do they lose the timeout? Oh, yeah, they receive an extra one. Not bad. 73 to 59, LMU down, but with the ball. Newsom inside the paint. Kirkpatrick missed the layup and then knocks Wilson to the floor, helps her up. And a two shot foul for Sydney Wilson, who have a chance to establish a new career best. Kirkpatrick picking up her fourth and the team's fifth. Been a frustrating night for Addie Kirkpatrick. Great. 
So Kirkpatrick with four points, two of five from the field in her 13 minutes of play tonight. So Wilson will go to the stripe where she is four of six at the free throw line of the game. Misses the first again. Pioneers will bunk a trend of close games with LMU. This will be, if the score holds, the second consecutive double-digit final in the series in the last three years. Wilson missed the second one. And the Pioneers get the rebound, and there's a four-second differential game clock to shot clock. And LMU is just going to let him sit there and run the clock down. Tuscombe will probably gl gladly just give the ball back to LMU as they're going to pick up their fifth consecutive win, get their 14th win of the year, and go to 18-11 and 11 against the rail splitters as South Atlantic Conference opponents. And the final timeout asked for by the rail splitters. Down 14 points with 4.2 seconds to play in the game for interim coach Eric Bruton, Jr. 80s night here tonight. Coming up, it's game two of our doubleheader. Tusculum and third-ranked LMU. Looking forward to that one. We'll have our 6 o'clock news for our radio listeners. We'll have our 6 o'clock newscast brought to you by Jeffrey's Funeral and Cremation Services in between our games, and that'll be at the conclusion of our conversation with Pioneer Coach Devin Carter. So uh, stay tuned for that. He's really quick about joining us right at the table. Then we'll have our newscast and then that brief break in between the games as we get set for game number two. Nationally ranked LMU comes in here. The Pioneer men, 22nd time they'll face LMU as a ranked opponent in the D2 era. Oh, and a 22 against them. And the highest ranking for LMU was second. The highest opponent that the Pioneers have defeated is King, ranked seventh. The inbound play is knocked away by Jayla Arnwine. Pioneers aren't going to make it easy for LMU after the timeout. Kaiser to Kirkpatrick. Three ball by Flowers. No. That'll be the game. Pioneers win. Pioneers win. They knock off the LMU rail splitters to get the victory and get a big game from uh, Sidney Wilson and Jayla Arnwine as the Pioneers go on to the victory by a final score of 73-59. Stay tuned. Pioneer coach Devin Carter is on the way next. Again, your final, Tusculum 73, LMU 59. Pioneer basketball and our postgame report is next on the Pioneers Sports Network.